Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Muhammad Arifin Rabbi Imon, currently pursuing my bachelor's degree in the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering from Islamic University of Technology. Before starting my presentation, on behalf of my co-authors, I would like to thank IEEE Menacom 2021 conference for allowing us to present our work on the video presentation remotely. The title of our presentation is Advanced Encryption Standard for Embedded Applications, an FPGA-based implementation using VHDL. Let's start with some introduction and background. Living in the age of data, Big data has been getting more attention in every practical fields, but with the development of computing power and technology, data security getting, is getting more and more priority. As the traditional threats such as malware, network homes, and data abuse is also increasing with this development. Cryptography is a technology to fight against all these various breaches or security issues. Developed in the early 1970s at IBM, DES or data encryption standard was thought to be the key encryption standard. But now, regarding as having insufficient key length of 56 bits, AES or advanced encryption standard has become the new standard having a minimum of 128 bits of key size. AES can have a key size of 128, 192, or 256 bits, but its block size is always 128 bits. Because of its excellent security, great performance, and dependability, AES has become widely used in high-speed real-time applications, such as uh, smart cards, ATM machines, satellite communication, mobile phones, etc. Various studies are going on over the years to implement AES encryption and decryption of on FPGA as well as in the hardware environment. To illustrate, Shen Chuang proposes an efficient FPGA implementation of data against brute force attacks and unauthorized access risks. Implementation of AES on FPGA considering a power throughput trade of minimization has been established in the work of Jason Van Dyken. McClone presents a single chip implementation of AES as the fastest one. Zorbe proposes an efficient AES implementation using FPGA with some extra enhanced security features and designs the architecture on a Spartan 6 FPGA device. Although extensive researches are going on, there are still room for development and improvement of the implementation of AES using FPGA in terms of latency and throughput. AES-128 incorporates encryption to create a ciphertext in order to protect the data from various breaches. This unreadable ciphertext goes over this decryption process to convert into readable plain text output. In encryption, we convert the data into ciphertext. This ciphertext consists of n rounds, which depends on the key length. For AES-128, we have 10 of these rounds. Each of this round will go through this whole process of AES encryption that consists of four transformations, add round key, sub bytes, shift rows, and mixed columns. The mixed columns is skipped in the final round. Now we'll describe, describe what each of these transformations are. Sub bytes is a nonlinear substitution phase in which each byte is replaced with another using a pre calculated substitution table known as the S box. The S box computation was done in a single clock, which offers certain advantages in terms of latency reduction. Shift rows is a transposition phase where each row of a state is shifted left cyclically over different offsets. The first row is shifted and remain not shifted and remains unchanged. The second row is pushed to the left by one byte, while third and fourth rows are shifted by two and three bytes respectively. Mixed columns uh, operates on the columns of the states where four bytes in each column combine together. 
the columns of the state are considered as polynomials of our Galois field and multiplied by modulo x to the power 4 plus 1 with a fixed polynomial. Add round key, in add round key block, each byte of the state resulting from the previous state is combined with a new round key in each round by a simple bit bizarre operation. This round key uh, is derived from the key expansion uh, algorithm. The decryption process is the literal opposite of encryption, where all the transformations are performed in opposite sequence. It consists of an initial round followed by nine times partition of an inverse normal round, and finally ends with an add, key, add round key round. The inverse normal round consists of following transformations, add round key, inverse mix columns, inverse shift rows, and inverse subbytes. <coughs> Here we can see the complete block of AES encryption algorithm, which takes four inputs, clock, reset, plain text, and key. Both the plain text and key are of 128 bits in length. The clock and reset are used as control signals. This whole architecture can be categorized into three regions, controller, key schedule, and main encryption. The controller is used to control the flow of input through different blocks and generate the round constant required for key expansion. The done and final round signal is also generated from this controller. This round constant is fed back to the key schedule block for generating the round key. This key schedule takes the key as an input and expands it for future rounds. It generates 10 round keys in 10 rounds apart from the original key using these equations, where W1, W2, W3 are the columns for the current round and the primes are the columns for the next round. This round key is fed back to the key schedule round and it is also forwarded as an input to the add round key block of main encryption block. The main encryption block consists of a four blocks which are uh, separately implemented in model scene and integrated as final entities in the code. In the final round, the mix columns is skipped and, uh, and the uh, output of the add round key is forwarded as the uh, final cipher text. Here we can observe the whole picture, how all of the blocks are working together. Here is the R constant. Uh, which is given as an input into the key schedule block, which generates the round key. This is fed back for the next round as well as sent to the add round key block, sub block. If it is the final round, the mix columns is skipped and the output of add round key block is forwarded as the final cipher text. Before analyzing the result, we have to first understand the definition of latency. The term latency refers to the time needed for design to execute a defi defined computational task. The computational task is the encryption of a single message block and similarly is subsequent, subsequent decryption process. The system can be, uh, this system can be analyzed using a, a test bench input pulse and the latency values can be obtained by counting the number of clock cycles between the instances where the test bench done, uh, done signal becomes high. And we can look at this figure that it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 clock cycles for the done, sig done signal to go high. This is the done signal as you can see. The proposed design has been coded using VHDL and the model sim software has been utilized for the design outcomes. In these diagrams, in addition to plain text, key, and cipher text, all the intermediate inputs and outputs of the fundamental blocks are also shown. We see that our latency was found to be 11 clock cycles, which, re which reveals that the design exhibits low latency. Here in the right side, we have tabulated some comparison of our proposed work with some of the previous work done. As we can see, we have yielded better results in terms of both latency and throughput. Our design yielded a throughput value of 1163 megabits per second, which has been calculated using this equation. 
Such high throughput gives the presented work significant edges related to greater speed and uh, reduced power consumption. Furthermore, due to low latency, it also requires less operational time at each encryption route along with much simpler key generation. In conclusion, our work presents an APG implementation of AS encryption and decryption using VHDL for embedded application. Low latency as well as high throughput have been attained while keeping the frequency quite higher, which is the main key finding of the strongest area in this presented work. Our design satisfies the main purpose of AES, which is to secure the data from unauthorized users. Hence, we can say this study presents an efficient FPG implementation of AES and a suitable architecture to make the hardware implementation in the future easier. These are the additional references that we have used in the comparison table. And that brings to the end of our presentation. I sincerely appreciate that I have had this opportunity to present to you. Thank you so much for your interest and attention. Assalamu alaikum.